good morning. Uh, we have been looking at uh, influence lines uh, and the concept behind influence lines. And in the last lecture, I uh, reviewed uh, the concept for statically determined structures, which I think uh, you already uh, have been exposed to, but it was just uh, a review and also a review of the Mueller Breslau principle uh, to show the application uh, of the Mueller Breslau principle for statically determinate structures to lead into what we are going to be doing today, which is influence lines for statically indeterminate structures. Okay? So basically, today we are going to be looking at influence lines for statically indeterminate structures and the uh, how do we look at the influence lines for statically indeterminate Now, for determinate structures, uh, the Mueller-Breslau principle itself um, application, since for a statically determinate structure, when you remove uh, the restraint corresponding to whatever it is that you are finding out, you make it into a first order mechanism and therefore, uh, all influence lines for a statically determinate structure are straight lines. And since they are straight lines, you can find out the ordinates at every point and therefore, you know exactly what the values are uh, for a statically determinate structure. You do not need to follow any other uh, approach to determine what the influence line values are at different uh, co uh, ordinates along the um, for different positions of the moving load. Okay? Today, we are going to be looking at statically indeterminate structure and uh, uh, we will we'll see that for statically indeterminate structure to draw the influence lines, there are two approaches. One, to draw the qualitative uh, influence lines to, to get a feel for how the influence line looks, we use the Mueller-Breslau principle. However, statically indeterminate structures, even if you remove one restraint, does not make it a mechanism. So, therefore, typically influence lines for a statically uh, determinate structure, a statically indeterminate structure, are not straight lines. And therefore, the Mueller Breslau principle application will only give us a qualitative uh, uh, you know, form of the influence lines. To actually get the ordinates, we need to go back to our direct approach, which is using equilibrium to obtain the coordinates. Uh, I will look for the next three, four lectures. This is what I am going to be looking at. And therefore, today I am just going to introduce the concept and see how to qualitatively uh, evaluate or qualitatively determine the influence lines for a statically indeterminate structure. So, let us first look at okay. this is the structure and the load the moving load moves from A to B. Okay. Or B to A. You know, I mean, doesn't matter. It moves between A and B. Okay. So, how do we draw influence line for a particular response quantity. Let us look at some of the response quantities. Let us say that I want to find out the influence line for M A the vertical reaction at A the vertical reaction at B <clears throat> at the center, I want to find out bending moment 
at C as well as shear force at C. So, we want to find out the influence lines for all of these. Okay. So, let us start one by one. Okay. I want to find out the, the influence lines for this M A. What do I do to find out for M A? I release influence line M A. I release and give a unit rotation. So, if I give a unit rotation in this direction, this is how the influence line looks where this is 1. So, what have I done? muller breslau principle released and then given a unit rotation corresponding to the influence line and this is the shape. What are the ordinates? I do not know. However, qualitatively this is how it will look. In other words, when the load is here, it is going to be 0, when the load is here, it is going to be 0 and in between, it is going to reach a maximum somewhere between the halfway point and this and it is always going to be positive. In other words, the M A is always in this direction and the value itself, we can always find out. Okay. The ordinates, I do not know. But, <clears throat> qualitatively, qualitative influence line for M A. Now, next, I want to draw the influence line for V A. For V A, what do I do? Well, it becomes, I have released that. And therefore, <clears throat> and then I give a unit displacement in the direction of the force and the influence line looks like this. The slope here is 0, this is 1 and here it is 0 and that is it. Again, the values I do not know. I do not know the values, but this is okay. So, what do I do? I release this, but note that it is still fixed. Okay? So, it is going to go up 1. So, this it is going to remain horizontal, the tangent, and then it is going to go in this way. So, I am going to look at the others by and by, but what have we learnt here in these two influence lines? 
the influence lines is that the Mueller-Breslau principle can be applied to get a sense of the ordinates. Okay, we can get a sense of the ordinates. However, we do not know what the ordinates are because the lines are no longer straight. For a statically determinate structure, when you release one restraint, it becomes a mechanism. We get straight lines and the Müller-Breslau principle directly gives me the influence line, the type of the influence line as well as the ordinates of the influence line. But in statically indeterminate structures, we only get a qualitative sense of the influence line. However, we know nothing about the ordinates because we do not know what the ordinates are going to be using the Müller-Breslau principle alone. Okay? But let us continue looking at, because even when we compute, we will see how we compute later on, but even when we compute, we need the qualitative assessment to be able to check that our computations that we have carried out are correct. Okay? So it is very important to use the Müller-Breslau principle even for statically indeterminate structures, even though you do not directly get the ordinates, but you get a feeling of how the influence line is going to look. You also get a feeling of whether, where it's going to be positive, where it's going to be negative, etc. Okay? So, getting back to this particular. So, we've drawn down it for MA and VA. And now we want to do it for VB. How do we would we do it for VB? Well, for VB, we release that and release that. This becomes a cantilever, and we give it a unit displacement. Okay, so this is how it looks. The influence line actually resembles the cantilever uh, shape function. Now, one of the approaches, not a very popular approach, but you can see that I can put a unit load here, find out this shape and this shape you know, for a cantilever, I could find out this shape, okay, and that shape would directly give me the ordinates then. But I'm not going to follow that method for this approach at all. Now, let us look for the bending moment at C. How will the structure look? If you look at it, the structure and for bending moment, I release the relative rotation. Okay? And then I do this. If I do this, what happens? This part is straight. This part is a straight line. This is a curved line. And the tangent. This is equal to 1. This is the tangent at this point, And this straight line the angle is 1. How much is this value? Don't know. 
also do I, I don't know about others. All I know is that this relative rotation is one. So this is Again, you will see that if we define bending moment as positive this way, then <coughs> this is the sense of the bending moment diagram at C. Now finally, let us look at the shear force at C. How do I do it? If this is to be the positive sense, then this one on the right will have to move up and this will have to move down. Okay? So it's going to look something like this. this angle theta and this angle theta have to be identical. And this one will be 1. <coughs> All I know is that if this is x and this is y, <coughs> because this is a cantilever and this theta has to be equal to this theta, obviously y will be greater than x. That much I know. But what will be the values, I have no idea right now. So this is the qualitative influence line for shear force at C. Okay, so <clears throat> this is for bending moment at C, shear force at C, this is for the reaction at A, reaction at B and the moment at A. Okay, so we, we can find these out. So this is pure application of, pure application of Mueller-Breslau principle. Okay, so essentially just to write down what the Mueller Breslau principle does is one identify a response for which I L is Identify response for which IL is required. <clears throat> A remove A restraint <clears throat> corresponding to Deflect structure 
ensuring a all geometric strains are satisfied and b unit displacement corresponding to unit displacement corresponding to response okay once you do that you've got the influence line for a statically determinate structure it is uh, that's it the miller breslau principle gives you not only the qualitative shape it also gives you the quantitative values at every point uh, of this thing if you have a statically indeterminate structure the miller breslau principle only gives you the qualitative uh, uh, value of influence lines okay so we see that the Mueller Breslau principle is a very useful tool for influence lines. But for statically indeterminate structures, it essentially gives you only a qualitative. And just getting qualitative influence lines is not good enough. Okay? Because you need to know uh, what the values are. Because why do you do influence lines? Because ultimately, uh, I'll, we will show that a little bit later that the reason why you drew, draw the influence lines is actually to find out the values of a particular response quantity given a particular load. And therefore, to find out the value of a response quantity, you not need to know the quantitative values also. For a statically determinate structure, Miller-Breslau principle gives it. How do we do it for the mm, statically indeterminate structures. Okay, for that actually we need to go back to our first principles and that is <clears throat> put the load here. at a distance x. I am I'm still dealing with the same uh, problem. Now, can I use equilibrium to, for this? Well, this is a statically indeterminate uh, structure. So, how do I do it? <clears throat> now, let us see. The advantage over here <clears throat> is that let us look at can I find out something for this? Remember that this, this, does it remind you of something? The propped cantilever, does it remind you of something? Does it remind you, let me draw the thing, does it remind you of, <clears throat> look back to the displacement method, the member, does this remind you of a particular kind of member? Well, doesn't this remind you of the modified member with a fixed end at one end and a roller at the other end, right? Now, do we know what the fixed end moment is? Well, the fixed end moment, we know for this, don't we? We have already done this. This is unit load. And so for this, the fixed end moments are, what is this? This, then this becomes L 
minus x. So if you look at this, this one is given by L minus x squared into x upon L squared. And what is this? This is this way. <clears throat> this is equal to x squared into L minus x upon L squared. This we have already done, don't you remember? Okay, so now for this one to get the modified fixed end moment, how does it go? Well, release this, put an opposite one, carry over half. So this fixed end moment is equal to L minus x L squared plus half x squared L minus x upon L squared. <coughs> right? Okay? So I can find out the fixed end moment directly by using this. Okay? So <coughs> once I find out the fixed end moment, think about it. This problem then becomes this problem with unit load where I know this, this which I can call as MA is going to be equal to, because this is a fixed N, so that is MA, which is equal to L minus squared X upon L squared plus half X squared into L minus X upon <clears throat> now, if you look at this, isn't this a statically determinate structure? Okay, where I know this moment. <clears throat> okay, I know them. Actually, I know them both the member and moments. This moment is equal to zero, and this moment I know the value. Given length L and given the position of the load, I know this value. Okay, and if I know this value, and there is a simply supported structure, I can find out all the others using equilibrium. Okay? So, let's go through the process. <clears throat> what is that? Well, one of the things I wanted to find out was MA. I have already found that out directly. Okay? Uh, the next was finding out VA. What is VA going to be equal to? Let's look at it. This is X, this is VA, this is VB. Okay? So, and then of course there is MA. So, if you look at it, VA is equal to one minus X by L that is the part of this load that comes here okay how did i find that out well take moments about this particular point and you will see that this will be va into l is equal to 1 into l minus x this is l minus x remember that so when you read that this becomes this plus now if you look at this this is doing this so this is going to be this so it's going to be plus M A by L. Now M A I know, I know V A. Okay, what is V B going to be equal to? V B is going to be equal to X upon L minus M A upon L. 
Okay, so I know in this particular case, I know M A, I know V A, I know V B, where the load is X. Okay, now, so therefore, the the main thing is over here is that I know these all these three I found these three now the next thing that I wanted to find out was the moment and shear force at the center okay so let us see how we can solve for that if you look at it let's look at this situation Let's assume that X so the shear force and bending moment are this way, this way, this is VA. This is MA, this is VB, and this is L over 2, this length, because this is point C. Okay, so this is shear force at C, and this is bending moment at C. Now, if X is less then L by 2 then shear force at C is equal to look at it V B directly bending moment at C is equal to if you look at this this does this so this is so it is equal to V B into L over 2. If X is greater than L by 2, then look at what happens. If X is greater than L by 2, then this comes on this side. Okay? And if you look at the shear force, shear force is equal to minus VA because shear force plus VA because this is now over here this unit load is now here so it's going to be shear force plus VA is equal to 0 because the 1 is here right now huh? X is greater than L by 2 okay so this is going to become VA plus SFC is equal to 0 so this is equal to and bending moment is going to be equal to let's look at it this is opposing it so it's going to be VA into L over 2 minus MA okay so the values of shear force and bending moment are different for X equal to L by X is less than L by 2 the position of the load is different now now the point is that I have found out the expressions for all the quantities that I wanted and let me now then draw so therefore uh, uh, let me draw it let me just say that
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, first x value, next. M A then once we get M A the next is V A and V B and once we got V A and V B the next two are bending moment at C and shear force at C. What are my x by L? This will be 0, L over 8, L over 4, 3 L over 8, L over 2, 5 L over 8, 3 L upon 4, 7 L upon 8 and L. Okay? So now, with these expressions that I have got, can I plug in the values of M? So I am now going to put in the various values of X into the expression for M A. Okay? That is here, M A. Okay? And... I am then going to uh, go through the steps. Okay, so let's look at it. Zero, x equal to zero. Plug that in, and you will see that m a is equal to zero. L over eight. Uh, if you look at it, you're going to see that this is going to become seven. Now let me uh, do the computations. It's going to become seven uh, by eight the whole squared into 1 by 8 okay so it's going to be 49 by 64 into 8 is going to be 512 so this is going to be 49 upon 5 by 12 okay plus if you look at it it's going to be 1 upon 8 squared into 7 upon 8. So that's going to be 7 upon 15. So that's going to be uh, 7 upon uh, 5, 1, 2. That'll be 7 upon 2. So this is going to be uh, 98 plus 7. 98 plus 7 is going to be uh, equal to 105. So 105 upon 1024 okay now so this is 105 upon 1024 okay so can I find out my VA for that okay let me see what the VA is going to be now <coughs> VA is going to be MA upon L <coughs> okay uh, by the way this is uh, into L here okay now VA is going to be 1 minus X upon L. Now X upon L is 1 upon 8. So this is going to be 7 upon 8 plus MA upon L. So 7 upon 8 plus this. So if you do this, this is going to be 128. So it's going to be 7 into 128. 7 into 128 is equal to into 8. Yes. Okay, so this is going to be uh, 7, so this is going to be 56, 14, 19, 19 is going to be 896. So 896 uh, plus 105, 896 plus 105 is uh, 1001, so it's going to be 1001 upon 1024. That is VA 
and VB, if you look at it, is going to be equal to <coughs> 1 minus that. So this is going to be 23 upon 124. And then, if you look at shear force, it's going to be VB, 23 upon 124. And if you look at uh, the shear for uh, the bending moment that's going to be multiplied by two half so it's going to be equal to 23 upon 2048L okay so since this L by 8 is less than L by 2 these two uh, kick in okay now <coughs> let's look at the qualitative values that we have drawn let us have a look at that. Let's see if these seem to make sense to you. Positive value at L by 8, positive. What about for VA? <coughs> it's almost 1. That makes sense. For BB, it's almost 0. Makes sense. For VA, very small value, and here also a very small value. Makes sense. Okay. So this is, <coughs> is beginning to make sense. Okay. So now <coughs> I'll just put it put down for the L by 2 value. This way you can continue on. Okay, so let us uh, let us just do a couple of more values. Okay, if you do L by four, <coughs> what will happen is this becomes uh, <coughs> three. Let's see what happens here. See L by four, this becomes uh, three L by four. Uh, so three by four squared becomes uh, nine by sixteen. Nine by sixteen plus 1 by, uh, multiplied by 1 by 4 is 9 by 64. So this becomes then uh, 9 by 64 and so this one is 9 by 64 and this one if you look at it will become 1 by 16 and this one will be 3 by 4. So this will be uh, 3 by 64. So this becomes 9 plus half of 3 by 64. So this becomes essentially uh, 18 by 128 plus 3 uh, is 20. Uh, 18 uh, plus 3 is 21. So this is going to be equal to 21 upon 128L. So if that is the case, then let's look at what VA is going to be. Again, plug in 1 by 4. This becomes 3 by 4. This one is 21 upon 128. So 3 by 4 becomes 32. So 32 into 3 is 96. 96 plus 21 is 117 upon 128. So if you look, look at it, this becomes 11 upon 128. This becomes then <coughs> 11 by 256L and this becomes 11 by 128. Let us look at L by 2. At L by 2, okay, this, what does this become? If at L by 2, this one will become 1 by 4 uh, into 1 by 2, that's 1 upon 8. 1 upon 8 plus uh, 1 upon 16 basically becomes uh, 3 upon 16. Okay, so this is 3 upon 16 L. So then if you look at this, uh, 1 minus half becomes half. 3 by 16 becomes 11 by 16. Okay, and VB becomes then obviously 5 by 16. Okay, and 
you see what will happen is that I have to actually do for bending moment there is no problem you will see that you will get the same but for shear force at L by 2 there will be an L by 2 minus and there will be an L by 2 so there will be two values one will be for L by 2 minus one will be for L by 2 plus uh, the reason behind it is that uh, the shear force just when the load is to the left of C and when it is just to the right of C are going to be two different values. Okay, So <clears throat> let us look at that. Uh, we have already got these values. So let us look at this particular. You see at a, when x equal to exactly L by 2 we can't define this. So that is the reason why. But let us look at the bending moment. You know bending moment is going to be Vb into L by 2. So this is going to be 5 by 32. Let us use find out the bending moment using this approach Va upon L by 2. So Va upon L by 2 Va is 11 by 16 into L by 2 oh, by the way 5 by through L uh, into L by 2 is going to be 11 by 32. 11 by 32 minus 6 by 32 is going to be 5 by 32. So whether you use this or this the bending moment turns out to be the same however the shear force is different if it is just to the left it's equal to vb and the value is 5 by 16 if it is just to be to the right it's going to be 11 by 16 okay uh, so this is l by 2 let me just do it at uh, 3l by 4 uh, and that I'm going to uh, stop it at that, okay? Uh, and of course L. Uh, so let us look at what happens. Let me do first for L. This is going to be equal to zero. So this is zero, okay? <clears throat> now uh, what about uh, this particular one? Uh, VA is going to be equal to one minus x upon L. So zero plus zero. This is going to be zero. By the way, this is one. This is zero. Okay, uh, Schiffer's is bending moment is zero. This is zero. Okay, now VB, VB is going to be equal to one. Okay, now bending moment. Now this here we have to set. We have to put this in. Okay, so Schiffer's is minus VFA. So this is zero, and V is uh, VA into L by two minus MA. Uh, VA into L by 2 minus 0 is 0. Okay, and let's just find out one particular value in the middle that is at L by 4. And if we look at <coughs> 3L by 4, what do we get? Plug in the value of 3L by 4, uh, you get 1, uh, 1 fourth, so 1 sixteenth. 1 sixteenth plus 3 by 4 uh, is going to be equal to 3. Uh, by 64, 3 by 64 and this becomes 9 by 64, One, 9 by 64, so this is 3 by 64 plus half, so this becomes 6 plus 15, so this becomes 15 upon 128L. So if we look at this, this is going to be 1 by 4 plus uh, 15 by 128. So this is going to be 1 by 4 is going to be 32. 32 plus 15. This is going to be 47 upon 128. If this is 47 upon 128, this is going to be equal to uh, 128. This is going to be 81 upon 128. Now if we look at this becomes minus uh, 47 <clears throat> okay and this one if we look at it VA into L by 2 so it's going to be 47 upon 256 uh, 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 and 
47 by 256 minus 15 so this is going to be 30 so 47 minus 30 is going to be equal to 17 so this is going to be 17 upon 256L okay now let us look at now I'm, I'm not going to draw do the other ones but if we look at it let us look at the qualitative values okay and we're going to end here today with this but let's look at this <clears throat> this started off large okay this is about 0.1 this is about 0.18 okay this one is less so if you look at this this is half half is actually 3 by 16 and this is 21 by 8 this one is only 15 by 128.1 this point 1 at this point is almost the same as L upon 8 so you can see the shape indeed is the way we have shown it and then if you look at the influence lines for these if you look at it VA right starts off very slow and then starts dropping really really fast and this if you look at it is almost point uh, seven and this is less than it's about point three so therefore it's really dropping fast which is how this is on the other hand if you look at this this starts off really slow here this is about point three okay whereas if you look at this this is point seven in fact this is going this way and if you look at it it's one here it's zero here okay so these the qualitative and the quantitative show similar ten tendencies and then if you look at this okay you'll see that at this what is this value now we know what this value is 5 by 32 L what is uh, this value well this value we know is now 5 upon 16 what is this value 11 by 16 add the two of them up you get 1 you look at this theta you'll see that this is the same theta okay and over here 0.7 you'll see that this is exactly uh, half of that you'll see this is exactly half this is linear okay so all these things which we saw qualitatively we seen quantitatively and just to ensure how did we do the quantitative influence line the only way we have done qualitatively is that we knew how to find out the fixed end moment once we know the moment at the end then it becomes a statically determinate structure for which we used equilibrium and solved it so the only way to get quantitative is by the direct approach so therefore you see that for influence lines for quantitative uh, for, for influence lines for statically determinate you have a combination of the Mueller Breslau principle and the direct approach that we have discussed already for statically determinate structures. Thank you very much. I'm going to continue with this and show you how the direct approach can be used. Here we could get MA directly because it's a fixed end moment. Later on you will see that if this is not obvious, we'll have to use some other method. Thank you. See you next time.